first thing we're going to cover in this section is called the product life cycle. So products are basically the same as people or pets and they have a life cycle. Some of them are short and some of them are long. If you think about a product like Coca-Cola, it's 130, 40, 50 years old, but then you think of how many other products are just basically minutes old. The reason you need to know the product life cycle and where your product sits in it is because it completely affects how you're going to approach your marketing. And if you think about your products in the introduction or the growth, which is the beginning, which is sort of the infancy of the products, you need to have a different approach to your marketing campaigns than you do if it's in maturity or then at the end is the decline of the product life cycle. So we're gonna take a couple seconds and we're gonna actually give you a couple tips about how products should approach the marketing campaign depending on where it is in the life cycle. So anytime your product's an introduction, the number one goal it's just brand awareness. People have no idea your product exists. Why would they? It's brand new. Even if someone like Apple launches a brand new product like earbuds, no one knows it exists. And so they have to treat the same way. If you look back at the old commercials from the iPhone and then you compare them to today, it's crazy how different they were because in the very, very beginning, people didn't know what an iPhone was. It's a smartphone. I don't get it. I remember when it first came out myself, it made absolutely no sense. So your first goal, of course, is brand awareness, product awareness. How do I get people to actually be aware that my product exists? And the second thing, what you need to do is you need to educate them. They need to learn what is this product. And there's a few different ways you could do that. That's why if you ever go to Costco and you get the samples, new products give out samples because people eat the sample, that tastes good. Now they know what it is, they buy it. Commercials, or they'll reach out to influencers or other kinds of people like that, and these people will explain what it is. Bloggers will explain what it is. YouTube channels will explain what it is. And the third thing that they do is they do what's called social proof. Social proof is by getting experts or so-called experts to sort of give it stamp of approval. This is why people use dentist approved, doctor approved, veterinarian approved, or they'll go out to get celebrities like LeBron James or Jennifer Aniston. And they'll say, hey, look at this famous person uses our product, so you should use it too. That's called social proof. Social proof is what gives new products brand awareness, and it gives them sort of like an authority that, hey, these are real, even though you haven't tried yet, these famous people or experts have, and they said that they like it. So this is the introduction, and it carries on into the growth, where your product is brand new. You're focusing on these areas. Once it gets up into maturity, now it's an old product. You think about basically fast food, soft drinks, those types of things have been around for a long, long time, and everyone knows what they are. And so now what your goal is, is just to remind customers. Using the Coca-Cola example again, that's an extremely mature product, and everyone basically across the entire globe knows what Coca-Cola is. Think about the last time you saw a Coke commercial. What did you see in it? You saw polar bears, picnics. You don't see anything that ever talks about the product itself. It has advertisements that have absolutely nothing to do with it. But the goal of these maturity advertisements is to constantly remind you that it's there. They don't want you to forget that they're still there. I already know what it is, you already know what it is, but they need to remind you because you know we're all busy in our lives and we just happen to get pushed to the back, out of sight, out, out of mind kind of mentality. So they can have just random fun commercials or promotions that just sort of remind you, hey, we're still here, don't forget about us. It's that kind of mentality. And then when you get into the decline, which is, means your product is going down, you have to kind of be aggressive or you let it go. And what we're gonna talk about in the next video, which is actually repositioning, is what a lot of brands will do. That basically means you change your brand to look like something else. But follow that up in the next video. The next section we're gonna talk about four vocabulary words. And what you wanna do is you wanna know these words and you wanna know which one connects to your product. So the very first section is a high learning product. High learning products are products that Basically, as consumers, we don't understand them. We don't get it. What is that? How does it work? And so brands have to educate you. To me, the best example in my, basically my lifetime, was a smartphone. I remember when the smartphone first came out, it was so complicated. My wife and I were, when we got our first ones, we were sitting around the table, and we we're just spending hours trying to figure out how this thing even works. I remember I messaged my friend, like, how do I turn it off? I didn't know how to turn it off. How do, how, what does this mean? I have apps? What's an app? Like, it was so foreign, but Apple did a fantastic job, and Samsung for that matter, 
of educating their consumers. I mean, they had classes and they had all these videos to explain how to use the phones because they understood that the process was extremely high learning to what existed in the past. The next one then, of course, is low learning. Low learning are products that basically as consumers, we look at and we already know what it is, we know how to use it. And so they're, you know, food, clothes, these types of things. But one funny thing is this, the smartphone went from high learning to now it's a low learning. If you look at the commercials that come out today, they're extremely basic in the sense that they really don't tell you even what a phone is because everyone knows what it is. Maybe they'll make one little note about what is new and that's about it because we already completely understand what the smartphone is. And so a low learning product are things that we know what it is. So brands don't have to take any time to educate us or inform us how to use this product. The next one, and this is the most unique one, these are fashion types of products. Fashion is the most unique and maybe even fun of all of them. And the reason being is fashion comes and goes. Right? Every time in the class I think about, hey, list some products that were famous or popular when your mom was a kid or when your grandma was a kid, and they're back. Think of things like jean jackets, bell bottoms. These types of things went and they came back. Fashion's always in a cycle. The rest of the, well, basically everything else in life goes up and it goes down. But fashion goes up, down, up, down, up, down, and it waves through. It never disappears forever. Hopefully there are a lot of things that will never come back, but basically everything comes back. And the last one are fads. What's a fad? Everyone knows what a fad is. The biggest fad happening today, my daughter is absolutely obsessed with fidgets. A few years ago, it was fidget spinners, but today it's fidgets. She's making videos about fidgets. Every young kid loves fidgets. These are fads. To me, one of the most fun fads, some could call it a one hit wonder, but I think it was more of a fad because it almost became a lifestyle choice, was the best song of all, Sigh. Gangnam style, people were doing the dance, people were talking like him, it was became bigger than a one hit wonder to basically a fad. But here's what makes a fad. It comes out of nowhere and it leaves just as fast as it came. And so as a marketer, you need to be very careful because you never wanna to try to jump into a fad. Because what happens is, as fast as it comes, it's as fast as it disappears, and if you try to jump into a fad, you potentially could be left holding enormous amounts of inventory, right? Because it just, you suddenly get all this product made and then it disappears and you miss out. And so that's a fad. But here's the thing I want you to remember. A fad and a trend are very similar, but a fad can last weeks, maybe months. A trend can last years. And so somehow your job as a marketer is to understand when a new product comes out, is this gonna be a fad or a trend? Because if you think it's gonna be a fad and turns into a trend and you miss out, you're gonna miss out on millions, potentially billions. And I'm gonna give you an example of someone that thought a fad was coming, but it turned out to be a trend, and now it's even bigger than a trend, it's just the way we land. If you rewind the clock all the way back to the 2010s, there used to be a phone called a cookie that LG made. It was this touch phone, it wasn't a smartphone, it was a touch phone. My wife had one, it was a terrible phone. But LG had this phone. Some of us thought we were too happy with the success of the feature phone, Kim said. We were so late preparing for smartphones. Verizon pumped it up as a potential to the iPhone. It was not, and LG knew it. There was no fire under my butt mentality, said a former executive at LG's US unit. Other players like Samsung and HTC were piling on the Android phones of their own, but LG hesitated. How many years later, guess what? I just read in the spring, actually, of 2021, LG is finally discontinuing all smartphone production. They have lost billions of dollars. They thought it was a fad, but in reality it was actually a trend. So as a marketer, you always need to look at things and see, is this a fad or is this a trend? Trend, is it a fad? And which one is it? And you need to bet right because you don't want to miss out on it. All right, thanks so much for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this, some good examples in here. Remember, make sure you look at always thinking about where's our product and product life cycle, and then always thinking which one of those four vocab words is our product, and so you can stay on top of these things, and you can continue to have a successful marketing career. Thanks for everything, take care, and I'll see you soon.